Next up, I have uh, the great honor to introduce uh, uh, Secretary Noah Valenstein, Secretary of the Florida Department of Environmental Protection, uh, an old colleague as well, and uh, in fact, um, the uh, Acting Chief Resilience Officer for the State of Florida. Under uh, Secretary Valenstein's leadership, uh, we saw some movement in the Florida Legislature this past uh, session um, earlier this year. Uh, Mr. Secretary, uh, the floor is your, yours, sir. Thank you, Steve, and uh, definitely a deserved compliment to you, so I would, I would second that. Um, thanks for the opportunity to chat this afternoon. Thank you for doing such a good job about putting this conversation on um, during 2020 and the pandemic that we're in. It's important to continue because I think the theme you hear a lot in resilience, and rightly so, with climate change is that we don't have time to waste. And I will fit a lot less in because I can't speak as quickly as Jennifer, um, but Hopefully that'll be the one takeaway um, that you get from the presentation from us at DEP and then myself, as Steve mentioned, as the acting chief resiliency officer for the state of Florida, as well as being secretary for DEP, which has been an honor for me to be able to do both of those. Um, next slide, please. I think one of the things that's been a frustration on climate change in general is that it affects everyone, yet sometimes it seems impossible to have a local conversation or um, frustrating sometimes to um, deal with incenting local action. Um, next slide. And I think that's what makes Florida special and is what made the Southeast Florida Compact, um, Climate Change Compact, so special is that when you look at Florida, you know um, that we have a challenge. Water is an issue across all of Florida. Sea level rise is particularly problematic, but climate change as a whole is something that we as a state must face head on. Um, that's something that Florida has recognized for some time. And in fact, the first chief resiliency officer that was appointed by um, Governor DeSantis, Julia Neshwat, um, Dr. Neshwat pointed out in her first annual report um, that of all climate change impacts, water related impacts was what the state must focus on. And in this photo, you can, you can see why. Whether it's impacts to our drinking water supply or coast, it's something we have to deal with. Um, by, oh, you can move on to the next slide, it's fine, thank you. Um, by 2050, uh, we need to be prepared by, for as much as two and a half feet of sea level rise. That's a pretty daunting task here in Florida. Um, I won't read through the stats, I think everyone um, on the group knows them, but that has a profound impact on the look and feel and what we have to adjust here in Florida um, with innovative tactics and thinking ahead, but it doesn't mean we have lots of time. We do have time to take actions, through smart planning right now, but I do think almost every meeting um, that we have on sea level rise or climate change here at the agency, we need to start out with this slide and start out with this conversation to remind ourselves again of the sense of urgency um, and something that our chief science officer uh, uh, brings up on a regular basis is, you know, that's not all going to come at the same time, right? There's a lot of great research going on about um, geographic variability of sea level rise, but also the temporal variability of it and that we won't have um, the convenience of deciding when that 2.5 feet comes and whether it's measured out in equal increments across time or not, and it is most likely not. And that's something that again needs to be added to our sense of urgency. Next slide, please. So with that, I just want to thank um, the great team at the Department of Environmental Protection. Uh, we've had, uh, I think, a, a really good progress over the last three years, um, bringing together a resiliency program for climate change. Um, Whitney Gray, who's our director, can't thank enough um, for all the wonderful work she's done setting that program up. You know, three years ago, we set that program up. And then recently, um, under Governor DeSantis, we actually reorged our agency so that now we've got our coastal permitting, coastal zone management, um, and resiliency program all under one shop and one house, um, which I think is an important recognition of how important a problem this is and that we need to look at those things in a connected manner. This shows areas where we're funding um, either planning or projects. And this is the process, again, that we're looking at right now. Um, this mantra of Whitney's to make sure we're doing the correct assessing, um, planning, to implement, uh, recover, and then uh, readapt to make sure we're making the right level of progress. Again, we've got that time right now um, to make sure uh, we're doing the correct vulnerability assessing, planning, and putting projects into action. Next slide, please. 
I think one of the biggest benefits we'll have this year, and Steve mentioned, I think maybe uh, Jennifer too, was uh, we saw some action in the legislature this year, which was really good. And it was a pleasure to work with um, uh, Senator um, JJR, uh, Senator Rodriguez on Senate Bill 178, which will for the first time require us as an agency to um, provide state guidance as to what is the sea level rise um, projection that should be used, um, what is the planning horizon that should be used, or more importantly, the combinations of projections and planning, planning horizons that need to be used. Right now, that's something um, that unfortunately has been happening on a county or municipal basis and can end up being a real barrier to progress if every time a county is looking to come up with their chart, their path forward for dealing with sea level rise, and they have to start with what is our planning horizon that we need to think about, or what are the different planning horizons, and what are the different sea level rise um, projections that we need to look at. If there's not a strong state backbone there, that becomes a major impediment. So we're really excited about that. We start our development, our rule development notice um, November 1st. Uh, we'll actually start having workshops at the end of October going through November to collect input on that and then to develop the review process for coastal construction projects being funded by the state, which I think is an important um, new element in the state of Florida and hopefully will become a template for other states and also municipalities and counties to look at. Next slide. And then lastly, I'll mention again to just reiterate um, Julia's focus was water is important. And one of the things we have doing really well and in the alumni photo that Jennifer showed, you could see Obi um, in, on, off to the side too, who's a great alum of South Florida Water Management District, is we've got great staff and great expertise on water management issues in our water management districts. And let's make sure we use that um, to our benefit. I think there have been attempts in the past to really ramp that up with um, climate change planning uh, and analysis uh, through water management districts, but I think we now have the structure in place with both a chief resiliency officer, a chief science officer, as well as um, we hope to see chief science officer or chief resiliency officers, I should say, in our water management district to really take that step forward and make that a permanent planning process. And that's a project we're um, hopeful to begin working on um, and have more to announce in the future. And with that, I'll turn it back to you, Steve. Thank you, Mr. Secretary, I appreciate that. Thank you for joining us and sharing your update. We'll look forward to uh, the rulemaking that uh, begins uh, in two weeks time. Yeah, thank you.